This is the Garden of Terror where you fight the Shamblers, collect seeds, and then control Garden Terror. Would you believe that Abathur can and will do all three of those today? So, we have here Abathur in his Pwain jammies. And one thing to know with Abathur is that he doesn't have to walk at the start of the game. That's for, that's for other creatures. Abathur can teleport, but you need to time it right. The Spawn Locust ability is disabled until the start of the game. It is also disabled while you are deep tunneling. So what you need to do is that as soon as the game starts, immediately deep tunnel to right up front where you want to go. In this case, we'll be going top. If you do it immediately before the Locust spawns, then the Locust will spawn when you get out the other side. And then you have a fast Locust out there to scout, see who else is who's coming out, get off some free damage, we see its hammer, we get some free damage, and we, we didn't have to walk, although you do walk back behind the gate. And then of course you can use Carapace and Nest to help secure your uh, in-lane partner. Now, in this case, they have two specialists and we just have Abathur. Zagara and Hammer, they're going to be pushing a lot, but Abathur isn't really a super pusher in the lane he's in. His strength is the ability to support any lane while still passive pushing this, and that can just grow stronger over time. So if you're laning against Hammer or Zagara, expect them to push early game, and then so long as you can help win the team fights, help keep the specialist going to team fights instead of going out there, then you'll be out pushing them because you sit here and contribute. And here, of course, with Tychus there jumping on him just at that low health, giving him that shield, that is key. And you really want to make sure when you jump on someone that you're doing a, doing a difference. When they're low on health, that bit of shield makes a huge difference. That's the sort of opportunity you're looking for. Zeratul looking around here, probably checking for Abathur. Now, you'll notice that they have two stealth characters in their team, Nova and Zeratul. Now, he shouldn't be checking for Abathur. You only check for Abathur in the lane with Locusts, because Abathur passively spawns Locusts. He can't control it, and they can't teleport. So he should only be looking at the Locust lane. But those stealth heroes will often want to come in and try and kill Abathur. So if you're against stealth heroes, you might want to consider mining your own base. If you put the nests here, they try and walk in, they hit a nest, it de-stealths them. It de-stealths them before they fire. And against Zeratul, this is good positions. Against Nova, you want to be a little farther back. You want to be closer to the gate. But it's important to be in the middle of your towers. Zeratul will walk in, burst you down, and then blink over the gate. Nova will walk in, burst you down, and then run back out. Uh, usually from this side. <clears throat> so it's only be taking hits from the tower. But, while they're within range of you, if they're in range of multiple towers, they're getting hit. They're taking a lot of damage. And, if they get de-stealth before then, they have to back out, blink, run away immediately, and you're safe. Early game, that's plenty defense against self. Late game, it can get harder. But, keep that in mind as a defensive strategy when there's one or two stealth characters here uh, in the enemy composition. Often you'll find it depends on the player. Some players will want Abathur so bad that you can lay traps and then they will die to them over and over and it's great. Other players won't even waste their time. They'll try and secure the kills that are actually out side the base because it's easier. And if you find that you're against those players, you might not need to mine. Just make sure you're in the middle of the towers. Um, this is a very stealth heavy composition. <coughs> So we're going to be trying to do all those tricks, but it brings up another point to keep in mind about stealth, which is map awareness. Who can blue team see right now? They can see Hammer, they could see Zagara, they can see Tyrael. They're all on the mini-map. You can't see the stealth ones while they're stealth. If they're not stealth, they could be anywhere. They could be in your base. This is even when, between when I haven't put the nests back up. So this is a period of relative vulnerability, but he decides he doesn't want to try it. Jumping in there, he'd get hit by three towers, I can heal from the well if he doesn't finish me off immediately. It's risky. Also note that if you do get jumped by Zeratul Nova, 
this early, it's so risky for them. If you symbiote, if you see them coming and you symbiote a tower, even if they manage to start comboing on you, if you can get some shots on them, you'll often be able to kill them because the towers almost kill them on their own. They're really struggling to escape after bursting you down. So that's a very risky gambit for them if you stay in the middle of the towers. Uh, and you can make it even harder using good mind placement, using symbiote, and trying to use map awareness. But as I said, when they're cloaked, it, you, it's, it's not a stealth that's super effective when you're in the same lane like this, because you can see the shimmer. But on the mini-map, you need map awareness as Abathur. Never go out into a vulnerable location unless you know they're all on the other side of the map. And when they're stealth, it's really hard to know that. That's why you just can't move out nearly as much against a stealth team. It's too risky. Stay here where it's safe. Where you're snug and cuddly in the towers. And that might be a little close to Gaver there, but it's good for Nova. It's not a big deal. It's the middle of the three towers. Now... Looking at the talent picks, there's obviously no choice for level 10. It's ultimate evolution. And who do you copy in this lineup? Normally you want to copy someone with high damage and with some evasive ability so that you can draw their attention without taking too much damage. Without talents, you can't really tank well. Uh, and you want to get out as much damage as possible. In this case, probably Vala or Tychus. Those are great picks. Zero Tool can work too. As you can see, we're keeping the alt ready for a team fight in this case because there's no decisive place to try and push them out with just the alt. So, in this case, we're going to see it happen now. We come in here, we see there's too much, and we try and alt in to salvage this one. Weird Void, uh, void Prism Buyer's Air Tool, not quite good enough to save him, and so it ends up being we replace him, but. It does help us pick up the kill on Nova. Zeratul is not one I generally recommend copying because Void Prison is very hard to use well. You have 15 to 30 seconds to use it well, basically. So that that is going to be very difficult to, for uh, Abathur player to use. That wasn't too great. Generally, I would recommend only someone else. Maybe even here, I made the wrong choice. It happens. Just don't stay alive too long unless you want to jump in and snipe their avatar because you know how that risk reward is that the stealth character will probably die too. If they have an avatar and you can clone a stealth character, use any spare time you have to go avatar hunting. It might not be the best game sense. It's just a lot of fun and you can safely take the risk of everything but wasting time. Now Terror. We did some excellent defense of the Terror there few things to mention about defending against the terror as Abathur. Uh, the symbiote can go on them while they're polymorphed into plants. And often, enemies aren't expecting that. They expect them to be slow, unable to do anything, but the symbiote abilities all work. So that can be quite effective. Uh, and the also, the symbioting a tower is usually give you a good place to shoot at the... Um, little plant overgrowth that it has taking the towers down. If you damage that plant overgrowth, then it will decrease the amount of damage it can do to your towers. So there's some good things to defend with. Just don't actually have Abathur in the area being pushed. And there, he just managed to dodge it. He's not letting getting in front of the minions. Because stab is a skill shot, minions can body block it. But if he went in front of the minions, you could get some stabs off him from those minions. <coughs> so, Let's take a moment now to review the talent picks, which we've left off for a while. This is a bit of an unusual set. We're going with a nest build, which is getting Venom Nest first, then Vile Nest at 7. You don't need Mule so much on this map. Prolific Dispersal uh, with these other two talents allows you to go into ultimate more for longer and still have lots of nests. And Barb Spines for stab damage. Stab is basically all of your hero damage. It's not really a contest. You almost all, you will pretty much always get stab damage. Even if you're going in nest build, you can usually find a place forward enough to do some nest placement, some useful nest placement, 
if only, even if it's only covering the retreat for your, your allies, uh, then <coughs> you can do that without Ballistosports and you deal actual hero damage with the extra 20% stab damage. Uh, as for nest placement, in these bushes is always great for um, checking the bushes with something other than a teammate's face. But also, you want to be putting mines around in these corridors here. Not on the plant spawn locations normally, because then the plants will trigger it. But just places where you can get vision of enemies trying to come in. If you get vision of the enemy movement, especially if it's a stealth character coming up trying to surprise someone, that can really help your team. So make sure to try and place a nest for vision. Even with the nest build, the damage is still going to chip away at them if you get off the vision hit. The slow is going to make it harder for them to get to where they want to go. That's how the nest placement goes. Here, ultimate, just get the damage and then die off. Excellent work. Especially if you can cover the retreat by staying in there longer. Other players should keep in mind, never try and save an avatar player never uh, who's cloned. I mean, save him here if they push, but if in the clone, never go and try and keep the clone alive. Never stay in a battle to give the clone a chance to escape. We want him to die and you to get away alive. And and it can be really hard, actually, because on the mini-map, you might see it looks like some player is suiciding. But if it's an Aether clone, let it suicide. It's fine. So here, you can see that with the symbiote, we're going on getting off a burst and then going back off. So with the symbiote I find what's most effective is to activate symbiote uh, and then get off a stab, a spike burst, a carapace, another stab and then back out of symbiote. And the reason is that that puts symbiote on cooldown. You can put it somewhere else as soon as possible where it might be needed like in that case. And also that gets you spike burst and carapace back faster because they have longer cooldowns than Symbia. So if you fire off your burst, the Carapace will stay on them if you leave. And you get out, you get another Carapace sooner, you get replaced sooner. Stab because of the way it has charges. Sometimes you'll want to stay on for that third stab sooner. But if you do go off um, as soon as you've done your two stabs, when you come back on, you'll have two stab charges. So it's roughly the same stab damage better in all the other respects. While you're waiting for Symbiote to come off cooldown, place your nests to make sure that you manage to always place all your nests, get the most nests out instead of letting them bunch up. And then, you know, have a look around the map, see where you might be needed next. You also might note that in this case we have Adrenaline Boost. Uh, if you're not getting Locust Brood, which is normally a great ability, and you can even get it if you don't take the other Locust abilities. But if you don't take the other Locust, uh, locust abilities, you might want to get uh, Carapace Speed. That way, Carapace is normally when you're trying to help someone survive. That 40% speed boost usually helps them survive. It's surprisingly effective. And the other thing to consider about this particular build and matchup, as we mentioned, they have a lot of stealth. We can't move out very safely. So we're going, if we're going to be moving out, it's going to be in ultimate form, and the rest of the time, we're mostly contributing via symbiote and nests. So why not buff the symbiote? This sort of talent pick with focusing on nests and focusing on symbiote is good when you don't feel you can move out safely, when they have are going to have obvious map control when they have too many stealth characters. And you don't need to push out. We, I happen to be able to sit up here because they aren't being very aggressive. But if they push me back, if they were spending all their time Abathur hunting, if they uh, had taken out all these forts, we wouldn't have to go into a risky position to get out a, uh, a lot of our value. Now this is the mechanic for the map. Fight the uh, crawlers, get seeds. The crawlers do so little damage, you can get them in melee. With this nest build, you can get them with the nests. You can also get them with the locusts and symbiote the locust. You can grab a small camp and get out as soon as they spawn, if you know where everyone was. In that case, we had seen them team fighting and chasing down there. We felt confident that we could get it and get out safely. But map awareness is hard with stealth characters, so that's a feature on Garden of Terror that you might not be able to do if against double stealth. 
the, the other feature, Garden Terror, also works with Sabbath Earth. We'll see that later. Now, with the symbiote placement, you want to go somewhere where it'll have an impact. If we could have gone there, maybe the Carapace would have helped you with that low health. But probably somewhere where we can also deal damage is better. It's more where we can secure a kill. In this case, a new rack because he's the only one left in the team fight. But he's low, they're all low. This is the place where Avatar shines. It's making that little difference, that carapace. And that was staying on a bit long, but we thought we might have to chase off Nova. Now it's off, and we can come back on another carapace. That was actually his, but then we gave our carapace for more shields, extra stabs for more damage. And there, all those low heroes, including ours, that little bit... And there, extra shields, helps secure the survival. That is where you want to be placing your symbiote. On those cases where it's really close and that little bit makes all the difference. If you can't do that, you want to be chipping down their health, trying to chip away at their resources, make them go in at uh, disadvantage or have to tap the well area, just those little advantages. And if you can't do that in any heroes, just symbiote on the minions and help push. But always try and find a place where your symbiote can make a difference in one of those areas. If your team is in a three-on-one chasing someone down, they're going to get that kill. Well, unless they're all melee and they need the range. Then, but in the case where they're going to get the kill, you don't need the symbiote. That was really close. There was uh, good to help symbiote. This, this one game actually had a lot of those really close places. Might not get a good sign of where they obviously are going to get it. But try and use your symbiote where you will make the most difference. So here, now the terrors come up here. Note how Abathur is not here. Uh, note the little puddle of ooze there. That's where Abathur was when he used Ultimate Evolution. Ultimate Evolution is actually your best escape because it casts very quickly. I don't think it can be interrupted. And then you're gone able to do something, maybe clear the area, maybe turn it around, just make sure that by the time your ultimate evolution expires, the area you need to escape from is no, not still in trouble. Here it's surrounded by minions, that's bad, but it's something we can live with. The enemy heroes have all been pushed back. The minions aren't going to focus down Abathur nearly as aggressively. So when it expires, yeah, minions, but you can walk away, you can deep tunnel, we make sure that we try to keep the area safe. Not something you can always do, but do keep it in mind when you use Ultimate Evolution as your escape. And then here, this uh, got pushed back without the other clone, although they might just all be low on health. Using the nest to spot the enemy following them or to cover a retreat also can be good. If they tried to follow you, especially with the stealth, because stealth isn't revealed quite as much by the nest. They have to actually hit it instead of enter the vision radius. But it still provides you with some degree of sight. Are they here? Are they coming for in, in this direction? Which is invaluable information for your team. Abathur's toxic nests are one of the closest things to wards that uh, there is in this game after creep tumors. So... Now, we just need a few more seeds to get our Garden Terror. Should be pretty effective. But instead of fetching seeds, this team just can't stop with the team fighting. Team fights are normally what you'll be saving your ult for, but anywhere where you feel you can make a difference is good. Uh, somewhere where you feel you can save an allied hero or uh, secure a kill you wouldn't otherwise get. It's basically the same concept as the symbiote, just more powerful. And you don't always have to use it. Saving it for a particularly useful time, I think it's better than having it always on cooldown with the ultimate, especially at level 20. And especially if you don't have nest charges. So here, we have big team fight. Actually been sticking to symbiote instead of ultimate evolution in this case. And it was enough? Not sure, was it on cooldown? No? No, that's fine. Uh, at this point, ulting in.
for some extra pushing. If you have strong damage, specialists or uh, damage like Tychus or Vala, you can just use your ult for pushing damage or to secure a retreat by forcing them to pay attention to another hero. This one is just pushing damage. The ult wasn't needed in the team fight, and we won, so we may as well push with it. Once you've got your uh, level 20 reduced cooldown, then you can start using it to just push if you have, like, if they're all down for 40 seconds, push with it and then come, at, come back. Before you have level 20, I probably would save it just in case because the cooldown is so much bigger. But then it's gone, and now maybe we can get some seeds. One thing to note about this selection of talents, we actually have been able to be a bit farther forward because these the their uh, stealth characters are needed for all the team fights. It's just they have such a thin composition that they, they need everyone there. Now we're getting the seeds, finally. But um, with these picks where you're not focusing on the locust, one thing to keep in mind, you can't go out forward pushing, you also can't go out grabbing the camps by yourself. I mean, the whole point of this build was that we didn't feel we could go out safely anyway, so that's fine, we wouldn't have done it if we wanted to get camps, but it is just something I mean, to trade off and why you normally wouldn't go this build unless they have, like, double stealth. Now we have a terror. And guess who's going to get it? Avatar is actually one of the better characters to get the terror because in most cases he can escape and it can be difficult for any hero to escape in the worst situation. But also, he's not... Uh, this gives you your four normal characters. This is more powerful than Symbiote. He still has ultimate evolution when he comes out. So it works quite well. and. Often, when you come out of the terror, you might use ultimate evolution immediately uh, after going back to the base to continue the momentum if needed. The thing to keep in mind uh, is that unlike the other heroes, you have to escape before the terror elapses. Now to use the terror, you plant the overgrowth in the middle of as many buildings as you can. That was actually, doesn't seem to have reached that one, whoops. You use the Spore Queen's Curse try and get as many enemy heroes as you can, but also just zone them out. So overgrowth on those buildings, hitting on this one, try and zone them out from that direction as we start hitting on their core because everything else is really getting down. And the plant terror doesn't deal bonus damage to structures. Hitting heroes is usually a good choice, especially given the core shield, but pushing their core makes it sort of, makes them feel like they have to respond. And now, Terra is very low on health. You sprint to get out. You Spore Queen's Curse to cover you. Like that. And this is going pretty far, but they do have a lot of stealth characters who happen to be dead. You can exit out of the Terra early once you're at a safe location. You can deep tunnel back. They saw where I exited, but because you deep tunnel instead of Hearthstone, deep tunnel is significantly faster. Ultimate Evolution is even faster, but now we can Ultimate Evolution from a safe location if needed. Or we can save it because we seem to be doing alright. Add some Symbiote onto the, these guys. Might get a kill. We'll see. Uh, ultimate Evolution to try and save Sammy there and get in some extra damage. You can see. Quite decisive. And then you die, and no, well, that's fine. It's nice to get off the ult. But as long as you have significant impact, I think it's okay to miss the ult of the person you're cloning. That sudden full health bar, full mana, is a very big feature on its own. Uh, now that I've actually shown everything I wanted to, we're going to speed it up a bit because it took the team a while to finish off. Very unclaimed cans. Everyone focused on team fighting, which is actually a bit surprising given their number of specialists. You'd think they would try and get more camps. Abathur normally would be soloing camps, but he can't do that without the Locust talents. So with these nests, all he can do is he can still grab the seeds, he can provide more vision, power, more retreat. Can't get the nest, has to focus on helping his team. And with the charges up to 5 of the nest and the ultimate evolution buff uh, at level 20, you can ultimate evolution a lot, come out, place down 5 nests. That works fairly well. And now we're all pushing the core. 
Nope, still a little longer. Like I said, took a while for this team to finish it off. But, we did it, and we did it without dying versus these stealth heroes, because normally two stealth heroes is very good at killing Avatar. You really need to stay back more defensive. You need to use Ness to cover yourself so that they can't sneak up on you. At this stage of the game, they could trigger those nests, they could still come in, burst you down, and get away from the towers. So that is a bit risky, but they were all so pushed back, I felt it worked. And then it did. And that concludes the Garden of Terror episode of Ameliorated Avatar.